Today, friends, I'm going to show you how to make a fantastic clicky fidget in just a few minutes. So let's get cracking. Huge shout out to Callie Girl. She used the Patreon community in the design wish list to ask for this awesome project, which I think turned out pretty darn slick. So step one, friends, is to find what you're going to build. I'm going to make a gingerbread man. So I'm typing in gingerbread man images. And when I click the images, I want the outline. When you find an outline that you like, simply click it. And then I am going to use a screen capture tool to grab that outline. My screen capture tool is Snagit. When I click finish, it saves it as a PNG so I can work with it. Now that I've got that shape saved as a PNG, we're going to switch to pick SVG. I'm going to choose upload, visit my screenshot folder, and find our gingerbread man outline. Now do make sure you keep an eye on this. We do not want the double edges. We want a single edge. So we're going to go to the internal and I'm going to use internal two. Now we can download that SVG. I'm going to put it in my downloads folder and I'm going to call it Gingy V2 and save it. Now you can move to Tinkercad and hit create new design. I'm going to give you a template so you will actually be able to click that and choose copy and tinker. I print it white so I keep calling it snowman even though it's a gingerbread person. And the trick that makes this work is an awesome part I've put in my creations. This is the cutout of the socket hole. Notice I just traced those edges so that it would cut it out. This is where it cuts out the piece where the key press goes. To save these as a shape, what you do is you go to your creations and you hit create a shape. This way, they'll always be visible by going to your creations on your Tinkercad account as well. So simply click on one of them. Do not click on both and choose create shape. You can give it a good name. I'm going to call it key cutout. You can add tags. You do want to make it a hole and you do want to lock the part size because this is how they fit and then save that shape. Notice I'm going to have an extra one, which I don't need. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to delete it. So that teaches you how to manage them. And then, of course, repeat that process so that you've got the top saved as well. Now we can move on to building our fidget. We're going to choose import and we need to find that file. Remember, I saved mine in my downloads. When I click open, we must choose the art and then we need to pick a size that fits. I'm going to tell you that your largest size should be about 50 millimeters. They auto scale and you can choose import to bring it in. After a moment, your cool little design shows up. All right, friends. So here comes the magic part of this project. We're going to click on this and do control D. We're going to set it to outer line and we're going to set it to one and press enter. That'll make it larger than the other one by one millimeter on every side, which eventually allows us to have a half millimeter gap around the entire project. If you think you want a larger gap, just use 1.5. You'll adjust this as you mess with your printer. I do also set it to round and I maximize the quality. Now we need to take this and I'm gonna move it over here so you can see that I'm doing it separate. And we need to export it as an SVG as well. This makes that measurement permanent and gives us the cool tricks for making the walls. If you get an error like that, just back up and redo it again. Once again, export SVG. I'm going to save mine in my downloads folder and I'm going to call this Gingy V2. And then I'm going to put plus one because this is the larger one. And I'm going to save it. Now I can delete this one. And I'm going to import that new larger one. When I choose the file, it's right there. I pick the art, tell it import. After a moment, it arrives and you can see that it is larger than the other one by that exact one millimeter we put on every side. We're going to use this to make the walls in a moment. First, let's click on this one and switch it to silhouette so it fills in the middle. Let's do control D and shift nudge to move that over. Right now, I'm going to tell you to set it at 4.25 for how far our clicker is going to press in. 
Now let's place the cutout. If you move it close, you can see it would cut through, which is not good. So what we're gonna do is set our nudge to 0.5 and do control up to raise that up a half millimeter. Now we can grab all of those parts, do L for a line, and we wanna choose center and center. Of course, make sure that placement is where you want it. If you thought the center of your project was a little different, you could just memorize how many clicks down you went. So right here, I went three clicks and I would wanna match that same amount for this part. As I move this into place, once again, L for a line, I'm gonna do center and center. Notice it is not poking through at the moment. I'm gonna fix that by also doing a line and I wanna make sure it aligns to the top. Finally, don't forget, one, two, three clicks, so those are now in the exact same location. Now, this is why we made this extra piece right here. Notice if we click on it, it's on fill mold default, and these edges would be super tight together. If I do control D, so there's a second one. I set it to outer line, round, max quality, and I'm gonna set it to one. This gives me the new outline that'll be larger than this shape by a half millimeter on every side. If I raise it up, you can see how that's gonna have that gap in the middle. I'm gonna put it lower and change the color right now just so it's easier to keep track of things. I'm also going to lock it so that it doesn't get combined in the next step. See how this height is 11.27? We need to add the 0.5 we raised it which would be 11.77. I'm gonna just tell you if you stretch this up and type 11.75, that way it cuts for sure. We need to match the other one to the exact same height as well, 11.75 and press enter. At this point, we can grab all of that and do control G to group. Notice it does take a moment, but bingo, that's the key press area with the lock. Now we just need to unlock this one and raise it to the correct height. Remember the exact spot was 11.77. And then we wanna raise it up four more, so we're gonna make it 15.77. That is the outside of our cool little gingerbread project. Now we can take these two pieces and do Control G to group. This is the cap that fits in here. Real quickly, I'm gonna just do Control D, press the letter W to put the work plane here, and let's do D to drop. Let me show you how these fit. If we do L for a line, I'm gonna make this one the boss and choose center and center. That's where you can see that awesome gap that we put all the way around with that SVG trick. I'm gonna delete that, and we're gonna add some fun art to this one. I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees, I'm gonna to return to the basic shapes. I'm gonna add some little scribble arm pieces. So this is where we're at. I'm just gonna go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. If you don't like what you did, you can clear it. I'm gonna try again to make those a little more the way I want. When I'm happy, I'm gonna just click done. Notice they are huge, but if we do shift squeeze, we can get them to the size we want. That was an oops, so I'm gonna do Control Z. I don't wanna move that. I'm gonna get these to the spot I want when I rotate. If you stay close, it goes 22 and a half degrees. If you go outside that circle, it goes one degree at a time. I'm gonna find the angle I think is cool. I'm gonna make it a hole. I'm going to change the height to 0.5 millimeters because that's how far I will sink it in in a moment. And then when I'm happy, I'm gonna do Control D, move it to the other side, and use the mirror tool to flip it. Just like that, I can get those lined up exactly the way I want. If you wanna be perfect, you could select them, group them, and align them. I'm not gonna worry about perfection for this. I'm gonna move these down here as well. Control D, Shift Nudge to get it close. Pick my rotation, whatever I think is cool. You could change the size of it if you wanted. Once you're happy, of course, control D, of course, then click on it. 
shift nudge and use the mirror to flip it. When you've got those exactly the way you want, you can switch to the eyes and the mouth. I'm going to do the eyes with a cylinder, maximize the sides of it, shift shrink to pick the size I want my eyes to be. I'm going to go with size 3 for this project, control D to move those across. I'm going to do control D to make one of these for buttons as well. And then I'm going to show you the align trick because I do want my eyes centered. Shift select, control G to make them a pair. Now I can grab all those pieces, do L for align, make the pink one the boss, and make sure I center. I'm also going to change the height to 0.5. We'll show you the reason for that in a moment as well. And then I'm going to make the button 0.5. And I'm going to do control D nudge it to the exact spot and then notice if you don't touch anything else and do control D it memorizes those movements I'm gonna select the gingerbread man and the buttons L for a line make the gingerbread man the boss and choose center those are my parts now we need to sink them in we're gonna do that real easily by hiding the main part grabbing all of them and doing control down arrow one click to get them to the correct height. All right, I wanna paint these different colors after they cut out. So let me show you this skill. Control D and we're gonna do shift nudge to move them out of the way. So that was like five shift nudges. I'm even gonna go six. Now when we do show all, I can grab all of these parts. Notice I'm not gonna to touch this one. I'm gonna make this even easier by going flat mode, top view. So that way I'm sure I only get the parts I want and when I do control G, it cuts out all those holes. Now I can hide this for a moment and make these solid. Any color you want is fine. I'm going to just set mine all to red. And now when I do show all, I can grab all these because I'm doing top mode and flat view. Notice it only grabbed those parts and I can shift select to move them into location. Now I'm gonna leave these one color and I'm gonna show you how to paint them as multicolors in Bamboo Lab Studio, even though they come in as one piece. Let's take everything we've built so far and rotate it 180 degrees. That'll help the print be faster. Let's switch back to perspective view. And I'm going to grab all of this and put it up above this one for printing. Now I'm going to grab this back part and I'm going to shift select this front part. So I did not grab the colors and I'm going to export it only the selected three shapes as an STL. It does take a moment. I'm going to save it in my 3D modeling folder. It is going to be called gingerbread man, clicky fidget, and I'm going to put the word base and I'm going to save it. Now I can hide that part and I'm going to grab the details. Once again, I'm going to do export STL and this is going to be called gingerbread man fidget color. And save changes. Now, of course, we can bounce to Bamboo Lab Studio. We are going to grab this. I'm going to grab both of those at once open them. I do want a single object, multiple parts. Notice it does have non-manifold edges. I'm going to just hit repair. That only takes a moment. We double check. Everything looks like it's going to be fine. I'm now going to click from global to object mode. I want the base to be white. I wish I had brown, but I don't. You may have noticed I called it a snowman. That is most likely why. And then we're going to paint the color using the awesome paint tool. So check this out. I just click it so it knows I'm talking about it. I switch to paint. It shows me my four colors. And then I want to choose fill mode. So I'm going to make this red squiggly red and this red squiggly red. Notice if you miss, you can do control Z. And then I'm going to make the buttons black. And then I'm going to leave these other parts blue. I'm going to simply hit slice plate. If we zoom out, you can see the entire project. It's going to take about 50 minutes. And we're ready to hit print plate. 
double check our colors, and send it to the 3D printer. After a moment, it switches to the device menu. Once it finishes downloading, we can click play. It'll pop up and we can monitor everything from afar. And about 45 minutes later, the back and the front of an adorable little gingerbread person. Let's go add the clicker. All right, friends, so let me show you how this assembly works. Of course, find your cap. Look for these edges. This side is smooth. This side has the gripper. Pick up whatever you designed. Make sure you find the gripper and just match those up. Make sure you've got it going straight and you'll hear it snap. Then you can grab your top plate. And it snaps in just like that. Friends, a clicky fidget in just a few minutes. Note, these are the switches that I'm using. I will make sure there is a link in the description. Friends, as I wrap up, I hope you enjoyed the video and gained some awesome skills. Of course, I also want to say thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Absolutely love how that community is growing. Of course, there will be a link down below. And don't forget, it's got the epic message board so that you can leave design requests and ask questions about the projects you're working on. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching the video. Don't forget, every time you hit that like button, add a comment, click that share button, or hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get a little bit bigger which absolutely makes my day. Finally, friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.